Hi, I'm Sean Duggan, and welcome to The Fix, the podcast about Lightroom, Photoshop, post-processing software, and the things we do with our images after the shoot. In this episode, I want to take a look at the Lightroom import dialog, and specifically the import dialog as it stands after the latest Lightroom update which was released on November 17th, 2015. Because the biggest thing about this import was really a blast from the more recent past, which just harkens back to the theme and title of that old song and proves that everything old is new again. Well, thanks for tuning in and joining me. I do appreciate that. Uh, This is going to be a shorter episode of The Fix than we usually have. Typically, we run about, I don't know, 40 to 45 minutes. Sometimes we're like pushing the edge of an hour uh, if my guests and I get, you know, particularly talkative. Um, But as this episode airs, it is Thanksgiving week here in the U.S., Uh, A lot of people have a short week. They're going to be getting off early and traveling to uh, family gatherings, both near and far, uh, to enjoy the uh, fellowship of family and friends uh, around a a fine meal, uh, as well as all the potential drama that those situations (laughs) sometimes entail. Uh, So I I thought that uh, what I would do is focus on some recent news that uh, occurred in the uh, digital imaging post-processing world in recent days. And that is the release of the most recent Lightroom update. And that would be the 2015.3 or 6.3 update, depending on uh, which version of Lightroom you're using, either the Creative Cloud version or the Perpetual License version. Um, because that update, it, it kind of comes full circle because earlier, um, on the fix several weeks ago, um, back in, I guess, early to mid October, I did a show with Victoria Bampton. And in that show, we discussed what was at that, that time, the most recent Lightroom update, which was 2015.2 or 6.2. Uh, And that was an update that caused a lot of uh, commotion and uproar in the Lightroom community. Um, Not only were there problems with that update uh, in terms of stability and performance issues, and in some cases, depending on your operating system, uh, serious crashing issues, uh, particularly if you were on uh, the Mac OS using El Capitan operating system, Um, but the big thing about that update that really caused a lot of, uh, uproar and, uh, anger and, you know, dare I say fury among the Lightroom user base was the fact that the, um, the interface of the import dialog, uh, which of course is a, a critical point of the Lightroom workflow the interface had been totally changed, totally. I mean, it, it looked uh, like a different program. Um, and that threw a lot of people, you know, for a loop. It was a, a, a major change, a major stumbling block. Um, you know, certain uh, mission-critical features were either removed from the import dialog or obscured to the point where they weren't easily discoverable. Uh, so that caused a lot of problems for people that broke their import workflows, um, and it was just a, a, a big uh, commotion. Now, um, to, to play devil's advocate, you know, Adobe's motivation, I think, for uh, trying to uh, simplify the import dialog is that, you know, the import dialog um, 
is not necessarily, if you're a new user, the easiest um, interface to immediately understand and figure out. Uh, and I think that that it was the cause of a, a certain amount of confusion in terms of using Lightroom, particularly about where images were being imported to. Um, and, and, you know, I don't want to put all of the blame on that uh, on Adobe. I, I think that once you learned the import dialog, it was pretty clear what was going on. Uh, but the key there is, you know, once you learned the import dialog. So um, I think that some of the problem was um, based on the fact that that people were not necessarily taking the time to figure out what was going on in the import dialog and figuring out how to ensure that the images were being actually imported to where they wanted them to be imported. Now, some of that, I think, can be chalked up to just general, you know, human nature. You know, we plug our memory card or our camera into the computer, the Lightroom import dialog comes up. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's understandable that a lot of people just want to be able to get their images into Lightroom so that they can have fun with them, so they can view them and process them, make them look better, whatever, share them. Uh, and, and so they might just be motivated to just click the import button without really taking time to see exactly where those images were going. So, um, you know, that's kind of the the, the framework, the, the, the high altitude view uh, of, of the general import process in Lightroom that I think motivated Adobe to try to simplify the process. Unfortunately, in um, in the process of simplifying the process, they um, alienated uh, a lot of more experienced users who already knew what was going on and were, you know, quite frankly, uh, you know, aghast at the new import dialogue, which seemed to them to be a you know, radically uh, dumbed down version, which removed a lot of the functionality that the old import dialogue had. So that's kind of the um, setting the stage for this most recent uh, Lightroom update. And if you're interested in um, diving back and, and uh, seeing a uh, kind of a deeper, more detailed discussion of that, I do have uh, a previous episode of the show, as I mentioned earlier, that I did with Victoria Bampton, which came out in mid-October. I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you want to see that to just sort of come up to speed on kind of what caused uh, all of this that, that led us to this point in time, which is the most recent Lightroom update, uh, which uh, was released in on, on Tuesday, November 17th. So a couple of weeks after the initial debacle created by the 2015.2 or 6.2 update, um, and after a maelstrom of user feedback, and... <laughs> The feedback is a very kind term there to describe what was being hurled about on the various user forums. Uh, Adobe announced that they would be, uh, in the coming weeks, releasing another update to Lightroom. And in that update, they would be restoring the import dialog back to the way it had been prior to the early October updates. And this was greeted with much rejoicing in the Adobe Lightroom community. Now, I think that we have to, um, you know, really give credit to Adobe for arriving at that decision because, you know, they listened to the user feedback that was coming in after um, the early October releases. And th in, in consideration of all that feedback, they made the decision to you know, kind of roll back the import dialog to the way it had been in the previous version. And I'm sure that, you know, um, that may not have been an easy decision to come to, especially, you know, given all of the, the research and development that went into, you know, their revised import experience that they had, uh, put into that early October release. So, um, I, I do think that that is a significant decision. It shows that Adobe is a company that is willing to listen to their, uh, their very passionate, uh, user base. So, uh, uh, I do think that that is is significant and um you know kudos to them for for doing that so uh what i want to do in this episode here is i i want to take a look at that 
uh, that new old import dialog with the aim of just kind of highlighting a few really important concepts about the import process that will help you take control of the import dialog rather than the import dialog controlling you. Let's take a look. All right, here we are in the new slash old import dialog. Again, this is the latest uh, update of Lightroom, Lightroom 2015.3 or Lightroom 6.3, depending on whether or not you're using the Creative Cloud version or you have a perpetual license version. So these are just some shots that I took um, late this afternoon in my backyard. The light was kind of fading, so uh, not great light, not great pictures. And if you look at the blurry pictures here, um, that was not a deficiency in my camera or my own ability to focus. I was just uh, purposely playing around with motion blur and the fall colors in my backyard. So um, I'm not going to go over everything in the import dialog here. I'm just going to kind of skim over a few things. And I'm mainly going to be focusing on what happens over in the destination panel, because that really is the place where things tend to uh, go awry when they do go awry with the import process. So let's start off over here on the left-hand column. This is the from column. This just uh, denotes uh, or determines where your pictures are coming from when you import them. Right now, mine are coming from my, uh, my memory card for my EOS digital camera. If you are importing pictures that already exist uh, in a location on a hard drive somewhere, you can uh, open up these hard drive entries here and, and go in and actually specify the folder where you are importing pictures from. I'm just going to leave that set to uh, importing from my memory card. Now, one thing to uh, kind of highlight here is this uh, checkbox that says eject after import. This was a feature that was removed in the import dialog in that early October 2015 update. To the consternation of many, many Lightroom users, uh, it was pretty much universally derided as being a bad decision to remove that because a lot of people had grown to depend upon that, uh, myself included. It is a really nice, convenient feature. Basically, after the import is finished, Lightroom will unmount the memory card from your computer so you can pull it out of the card reader without having to actually, you know, go and drag it to the trash, eject it, or unmount it in some other way. Now, uh, I notice here as um, I plug my memory card in that this is not checked. Uh, it used to be that that was on by default, at least as my memory serves. Uh, so just make sure that if you do want to take advantage of that feature that you do check it. So next, in the middle here, obviously these are the, the thumbnails of the images that we're going to be importing. Uh, up at the top, you can choose how they're imported, whether you're going to import them, uh, copy them over as DNG files, just copy them regular, which is the default here. Uh, and then if you are importing files that already exist on a location on a hard drive, you do have the ability to choose to move or add them. So moving them would be moving them from one hard drive location to another, and adding them would be adding them to the Lightroom catalog in the location where they currently reside. So sometimes that is definitely something that you uh, might want to do. I'm just going to leave mine set to copy here. Uh, then, of course, you can, uh, in the thumbnail view, you can view all photos, new photos, or destination folders. Destination folders is actually somewhat useful if you are bringing in pictures that were taken over the course of several days. Um, it basically gives you an entry for each date, and you can see the date specified here. This, this date is being specified in a format that I have already um, chosen over in the destination panel. We'll get to that in a second. Anyway, this is useful if... Um, Perhaps you only want to bring in a, a certain range of pictures from a certain, you know, day or two and don't want to bring in everything else. I'm just going to set that back to all photos. And then we're going to uh, go over to the right-hand column, which controls a number of things. The primary thing and, and arguably the most important thing that it controls is 
Where are the photos going to be imported to? What is the destination? Now, you can see a, a, a little kind of truncated uh, preview here or, or designation of where they're going to be imported to. Right now, this is going to go to my Macintosh hard drive, to my users, my username, Sean, and then into the pictures folder. Now, that's the default location where Lightroom will import uh, files if you don't tell it otherwise. You know, once you do tell it otherwise, it should remember where it has imported uh, to the last time, and, and it should be importing to that location. But you should always you know, throw an, a, an eye up here and glance at this just to make sure that they're going to the right place. Uh, file handling, um, build previews, standard. I'm just going to leave that set uh, to standard there for now. I'm not going to build smart previews. I think the smart previews are pretty useful, and perhaps I'll cover those in another episode of the fix. I typically do not build smart previews when I import my pictures because I know that if I'm going to be doing a good job as a photo editor of my own work, I'll probably be throwing out a lot of my <laughs> images. Uh, so that is why I don't build smart previews uh, when I import. Uh, also, I typically only use smart previews uh, when I am traveling. They don't really make a lot of sense to use uh, in a catalog that is sort of tied to a desktop computer. Uh, and all that other stuff I'm just going to leave off there. And under file renaming, uh, it is remembering my renaming template that I am using. I do tend to rename my files, so I'm just going to rename the files there to my uh, chosen naming template. Under apply during import, this is where I could apply develop settings if I wanted to. You can see if I open that up, there's lots of uh, presets there I could use. I typically do not apply any develop settings when I import, although other workflows uh, may find that useful. Under metadata, I can apply my copyright notice here. So I have a template already created here for my 2015 copyright notice. Uh, and then, of course, I could apply keywords that are specific to whatever I'm importing. I definitely uh, do recommend applying keywords upon import if it makes sense. Uh, if all of the images are of a single, um, you know, location or event or something like that, and it is easy to apply some basic keywords for uh, location or event or some, you know, rudimentary descriptive terms, um, by all means, apply those when you are importing, because right off the bat, that's a little bit of uh, descriptive information that you might be able to search for to uh, find your images uh, in your collection. Essentially, you are making the the haystack a little bit smaller so that you can find your needle when you want to. All right, so that's all I'm going to talk about there. Uh, I want to talk, spend most of the time just talking about the destination panel, because again, as I mentioned earlier, this is really where things tend to go wrong in terms of pictures being imported to uh, locations where you don't want them or kind of multiple redundant nested folders being created. So first off, as I mentioned earlier, up at the top here where it says two, uh, this shows me this little folder path, which tells me right now, if I did nothing at all, if I just clicked import, this shows me where the pictures are being imported to. Now I can click on uh, this up here, there's a little menu there, and I see a list of previous locations that I could choose. So uh, right now I can see right here that my image archive Image Archive Originals, uh, Originals 01 2015, uh, that is the place where I would really want to put these. So I'm actually going to choose that here. Now, if, if you didn't see the correct location in that list, you would then have to just sort of open up the hard drive down here in the destination panel. And you would do so which by clicking on the little black triangle, uh, you know, to the right side of where a hard drive is listed. So here's my image archive 01, four terabytes. Uh, and here you can see that I've got my originals 01 folder. I have all these folders for different years. And then I have the 2015 folder. And so that is really where I wanna place these uh, since it is currently 2015. Now, uh, up above, you see here that I have chosen to organize these by date. And I have chosen a specific date format. So this is actually pretty, uh, pretty critical. Let me actually just close the 2015 folder for the moment. And let's look at our date format choices. 
Wherever you see a date format listed where there is a forward slash, that forward slash indicates a new folder level, a nested folder. So for instance, up here, let's go to this sort of third section down where it says 2015 slash November slash 17. What that means is that inside the 2015 folder, it's going to create a folder called November. And inside the November folder, it's going to create a folder named 17 for the 17th day of November, which is uh, the date as I record this. Personally, I'm not a big fan of lots of nested folders. Uh, I think it just gets overly confusing and I don't like to do that. So what I tend to do is use one of these choices at the bottom of the date format menu because notice that none of these have that forward slash, meaning that no nested folders will be created. So just to show you this for, for a moment, let me actually just choose that one I just mentioned, the 2015 slash November slash 17. And if I open up the 2015 folder and we zoom in here, you can see that what it's doing is inside the 2015 folder, there's another 2015 folder that's being created. And then inside that, there's a folder for November. And inside that is a folder for 17. And the pictures are actually going to go in that folder there. Now, ironically, when you target a folder, it doesn't necessarily know that the folder you're targeting is, you know, for instance, the 2015 folder. So it, it, it's almost like it can only look down and see that there's no 2015 folder and it creates a new 2015 folder. It can't kind of look above and out of the folder to see that it already is in a 2015 folder. Now, this 2015 folder here actually was already created in a previous import. That actually was uh, a mistake that was created in a previous import. Uh, and that's why that's going in there. But if, if no 2015 folder existed, uh, it would create a new one based on the date format that I've chosen here. So I'm going to change that here. Well, actually, let me do one other thing um, to, to show you how this is going to work. So I told you earlier that um, if you're targeting the 2015 folder and the date format says to create a 2015 folder, it, it can't really see that it already is in a 2015 folder. So to illustrate that, let me just click on Originals up here. If I click on Originals, and then I open the 2015 folder, and let me just scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that within that main 2015 folder, it is just creating that November folder and then the 17 folder. So the fact that these little folder icons here have little plus icons on them, um, and also that the text is in italic and kind of dim back, means that these are not folders that currently exist in my Lightroom catalog or on my hard drive where my images are stored. These are folders that will be created as a part of this import process. Let me scroll up here to the top of the destination panel and let me actually just choose my um, preferred date structure, which is this uh, eight digit expression of the date, 2015, 11, 17. And I will modify that once uh, I have the files imported. So now I need to actually target the 2015 folder because I do want those to go inside there. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that here's this new folder that will be created. And you can see that it has a, a similar date format structure to other folders and, uh, that have been created as a result of recent imports. Now what I tend to do is go in after the import and I change the name of the folder. I get rid of the first two digits and I just have um, two digits for the year, two digits for the month, and two digits for the day. And then I add a little bit of descriptive text to tell me you know, what the pictures in that folder are all about. So this is the, um, the main thing you really have to be aware of is how the date format that you choose and what folder you target is going to affect uh, where the images are placed. And also it will affect the creation of kind of redundant folders. Like right here, I already have a 2015 folder inside my main 2015 folder. 
as I mentioned earlier, that that's a mistake from a previous import. And I missed that, so I'm gonna have to clean that up, you know, once once this import is done. So that's the main thing you need to worry about. Uh, I do have uh, another video that I've made on this process, which kind of goes into this in a little bit more depth. I will put a link to that in the show notes so you can watch it. Uh, it's got a little bit more um, in the way of visuals that kind of clarify this, and it might be uh, a little bit clearer. So uh, as I said, I will put a link to that in the show notes. But for now, I will just uh, click import to bring those in. Okay, the import is done now, and you can see my fabulous blurry photographs, as well as a few that are uh, not blurry. And if I come over here to the folders panel on the left side and scroll down, you can see that in my 2015 folder, here is the 2015 11 17 folder. And what I'll do now here, uh, just since I mentioned it earlier, I'm just going to right click on that folder and I'm just going to choose to rename it. And I'll get rid of the first two digits as I mentioned I did. And I'll just call this, uh, I don't know, Autumn Color Backyard. Real profound name there. But it tells me enough. You know, I can do a search for backyard, I could do a search for autumn, and I would find all those. Well, I hope that you found that uh, clarification of the destination panel in the Lightroom import dialog to be useful. Just remember that when you are importing, you do need to double check where the pictures are going to, um, because that really is the, the, the place, I think, where uh, things go awry when they do go awry with the import process. Um, if you're not specifying a specific place uh, to import the pictures to, Lightroom is going to rely either on a default location uh, or on just the whatever the last location was the last time you imported photographs. And that may or may not be uh, what you want. So you can always go to the upper right corner of the import dialog where it shows the little icon of the hard drive. And that'll show you a little truncated folder path. It'll tell you where the pictures are going to be imported to. You can also click there on that menu and choose a recent uh, location that has been used for an import, and that may work. Or just come down in the destination panel, find the hard drive where you want to place them, click on the little black triangle to open it up, and then select the folder where you want those pictures to go. And also remember the role that the date format that you choose can play in whether or not any kind of multiple nested folders are going to be created as a result of the import process. So basically, um, you know, determining where the picture is going to go is really something you have to kind of take responsibility for. Don't leave it up to Lightroom. Um, otherwise, you might run into a situation where um, there is chaos and confusion in your image library. And gosh, nobody wants that. All right, so that is it for this episode of The Fix. Remember, you can always uh, listen to the audio version of this podcast on iTunes, or you can watch the video version, uh, as well as listen to an audio version on the website, thisweekinphoto.com slash the fix. So it's uh, currently Thanksgiving week uh, in the United States. I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And take a moment to reflect on some of the good things in your life and the things that you have to be thankful for because there's a lot of people in the world who have a lot less. I'm Sean Duggan. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time on The Fix. <music>